So what does it mean to endure to the end, friends? I think that's something that we've been through a lot. And <laughs> I guess sometimes we, have, we feel a bit fed up with all kinds of things. But in any case, it's still a very good and important question because we've been enduring all kinds of things. Uh, but first, let me ask you, do you remember the first day, your very first day at services? Well, some of you who were born in the church, of course, you will not remember the first day because you're little babies. But, you know, for some, some of us who are older folks, there was a first day and we remember that. I certainly do. I was in Watford in England in 1992 and I remember a long line of people. Well, that would be even 1991, perhaps. A long line of people standing after services to meet me and introduce themselves. You know, it had never happened that someone from Yugoslavia at that time. Uh, former Yugoslavia now never happened to someone from Yugoslavia uh, and it was still Yugoslavia or the last uh, you know days of that country were still on you might say so it never happened to someone from Yugoslavia from this from this area of the Balkans ever made it to services can you imagine even in Watford in what is Watford uh, 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 Watford uh, uh, England so of course that was uh, you know quite an attraction of course and uh, therefore there was a long line standing that was a kind of a significant day for me but also for them it was a very unusual and historic event for that congregation and then in august next year 1992 i finally came, went to attend the ambassador college and i was the last student to be admitted to the college that year and we were basically the last generation that was admitted under the still sound doctrine preached by the church uh, among those 1,200 students, I did kind of stand out again as I was the only person from Yugoslavia, later Serbia, to ever attend such an institution. And I cannot say that it was always the greatest experience there because of various problems. But, you know, I was very sociable and individual, uh, individual but also sociable. So, as you all know me, I was unique in my own way. In any case, I've met so many people of all colors and walks of life, and there was almost no social event that I did not attend an ambassador, because we had all kinds of cultural clubs, you know, and uh, various other social gatherings. So all those cultural clubs get together, you know, I attended all of them. And I remember that my boss at library where I worked, my boss, Jerry Patillo, a lovely fellow, commented to me once, he says, you know, he said, you know, this is God's college, but this is also the American college. And however, you have managed to be a part of all ethnic groups here. <laughs> because shortly before his comment, a phone call came in to the library. And one of my friends invited me to an Indian meal. He was originally Indian, living in Belize. And he was going to make an Indian meal at the home of our barber at Ambassador. According to the Texas law, it was not allowed to have... Uh, haircuts in in our dormitories and stuff so we have had we had to have a barber uh, we had to have a barber as as an official barber for the for the college and so uh, we were invited to his home and live home of his wife and uh, uh and it was lovely uh, and of course the meal was so hot as you can just imagine so some of them were just uh, <laughs> fanning their mouths, trying to, you know, make it more enjoyable. But it was a lovely experience. But again, you know, those are things that you remember. And those were the beginning of my Christian, true Christian life. I also remember there was a small package that was waiting for me one day at the library. And when I opened it, it was a cake. And there was a card for, from I don't know who else, but uh, a card was saying... Uh, well, it was hard times in Serbia. It was a civil war in former Yugoslavia. So uh, they kind of wrote, the, the message was kind of, we, we're we sorry for all this happening. They're all brethren too, even though we never had any brethren really in, in former Yugoslavia. A few individuals here and there, but never really a congregation of some sort. Nothing like it is today. Today we have a functional congregation meeting online every Sabbath. And we also have the... Uh, wonderful radio hope of israel or the biblical history in serbian rendering you know being broadcast every day 24 hours a day which is wonderful something quite amazing so we've been reaching who knows how many people and we see statistics every month or every second month coming from randy so it's quite amazing but anyway i still don't know you know uh, who sent that cake and then that card i think it was the french department because we had various language departments in the college where students who were from those countries worked for those departments. You know, they would be translating literature to their native tongues, Spanish, French, 
German. But to this day, I don't know who whose exact idea was this, but it did happen. <laughs> and there are so many memories of this sword that I can share with you, friends, and so many things I've learned from so many people, people I considered God's people and people I considered converted. Now, let me tell you something else that was very important and quite amazing, and it just remains as a shock to me to this day. It was, um, I think, a winter of 1994, and it was a Saturday night, and occasionally we would have movie nights for the student body, and the movies were shown, uh, they were all carefully selected, of course, and uh, that Saturday night we were watching Chariots of Fire. At one point, the main character in the movie, who was a runner, and pressure to train on the Sabbath, because there was a running race, there was a race, competition race, you know, at some point down the, down the line. But anyway, he was pressured to run on the Sabbath, and he just made a perfectly clear statement, which said, I will not run on the Sabbath. And my word, as soon as he uttered those words, brethren, there was a rousing applause in the audience, and hundreds of my student colleagues were exalted, delighted, encouraged. They were so moved by those words. I was one of them, of course. And there was a big clapping, and everybody was moved by that scene. That will be winter 1994. That will be... Uh, Winter 94, sometimes I guess would be November. Sometimes in December of that same year, 1994, the leadership uh, of the church announced that Sabbath keeping uh, was no longer required so strictly. And on January of the next year, another there was another sermon from the pastor general at that time. And that sermon, of course, came and derailed the Sabbath keeping even more. Uh, people called it Russian, <laughs> Russian Orthodox gift, you know, because it was delivered on January around the Russian Orthodox Christmas. So they called it Russian Orthodox Christmas gift. The overwhelming majority of those who cheered Sabbath keeping in the winter of 1994 stopped keeping the Sabbath, brethren. Many of them left the Church of God entirely. With some of them, I'm still in touch. They're still very good friends. Some of them were my very close friends indeed, the demise of former Yugoslavia and the apostasy of 1995 in the Church of God are probably the greatest shocks I've had in my now, now 52 years long life. Now, I don't know why all of those people left. I really have no clue to this day. But I know one thing for sure, brethren, my fellow students, some of my teachers, many of those in England who stayed in line to welcome me to God's Church, did not endure to the end. So I'm certain about it, they did not endure to the end. That's as clear as it can be. And the question that keeps ever burning in my mind is, will I endure to the end? You know, I often remind us of those words of Jesus Christ, that those who endure to the end will be saved in the future. But what does it mean to endure to the end? The scriptures related to enduring are helpful. They give us direction in this particular regard. Now here are, we are observing the Sabbath and that represents in a very real sense one of the goals that God has set for us. But if we give up, if we quit, we won't make it, we will not reach that goal. Now why would we want to endure to the end in the first place? Well, if you go to Matthew 24, there is a well-known scripture, the one which I dread most and more than any others. The creature, those are the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Now, Matthew 24, as you probably well know, is a litany of horrible things that will be happening in the near future. Now, do we want to make it through that? Do we make it a goal? It says, he who endures to the end will be saved. Verse 12 says, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. And when God joined me to his church back in 1992, I certainly could not even imagine that people's love could wax cold and they could break off relationships and not talk to me anymore. The very concept of enduring carries with it the idea of enduring something, you know. We're going to, you know, we're going to be enduring something because we are going through something. And I know, we know that there will be trials. We know that there will be tests in our lives. We know because there have been tests and because there are right now as well, especially in this pre 
you know, in these seasons, you know, around the holidays. Now we are over the Passover holiday, we are over the Pentecost holiday, but uh, the, uh, the various pressures and uh, temptations were very great, especially those two deacons who were to be appointed at the Passover or at the, sorry, at the Pentecost, and they were. And so we know that there will be tests and trials in the future as well. Some of those trials come from without. Some of those trials, at times, as, you, as we have seen recently, come from within. Some of those trials may involve persecution. That may be one of the things that we will have to endure. We are enduring these months, I would say, uh, a whole uh, sets of various lies and make up stories about us. You know, we were accused of being tail bearers, but <laughs> those who accuse us have fallen into their own traps. So they're just spreading tail bearings and 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 and, 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 and stupid things and sending some of them detestable messages. And uh, anyway, we are enduring it. It's you know, it's not easy. I know uh, for some of you it might be quite a, quite uh, unexpected turn of events. But brethren, sometimes yes. Persecution came from within. That happened quite a lot in the history of the Church of God, and you could see that during the Gnostic, uh, during the Gnostic, uh, how could we call that uh, uh, conspiracy? Let's call it Gnostic conspiracy. During Gnostic conspiracy against the Church of God, which subverted the Church from within and created something totally different. The next, the next century, the second century, when the curtains was was raised. You could see a church completely different from the one that was found, founded by Jesus Christ and uh, perpetuated by the apostles. In any case, some of those trials, brethren, that we also endure may involve persecution, and that may be one of the things that we will have to endure. There are some church members that have had to endure a certain amount of discrimination on the job, for example, because they're Sabbath keepers. You know, discrimination on the job, we have all experienced here in Serbia, for example. And, uh, you know, there's some discrimination you you wouldn't believe for what, all kinds of, uh, you know, reasons, which you who live in the Israelitish nations cannot really understand that much. But those of us who live in Gentile world, we understand and we know we have experienced even discrimination on, jo on the job because, you know, our members are decent people. They don't want to get in there and curse and have filthy mouths like most of the other people that they're working with. They are not, they don't want to pick up the phone and lie. And it's very common here in my country that you pick up the phone and you say that the boss or whoever is that is being um, uh, looked for is not here, is not currently here, is not at this moment, is not here in the office and all of that thing. It's a very common thing here in, in Serbia, lying like that. Now, of course, you in the States and other Israelitish nations will be horrified. And you may wonder, but that's why I told you many times that living in a Gentile country is far more challenging than living in an Israelitish country, you know. Sometimes it's difficult to, you know, go God's way and to do the right thing. Sometimes we're persecuted for doing that. Some are persecuted for other reasons, for different things in our lives. We know what that is like. Now, in this modern era of the church, there has been split after split after split. That has affected me indeed, and some of us from being very disappointing, very discouraged, discouraged and, or maybe it was even devastating for some of us. Indeed it was. Now, what does it feel to have the rug pulled out from under you? What does it feel like to have embraced a certain foundation and then everything changes and people say, well, no, that's not the foundation anymore. That's not important anymore. Oh, no, no church errors. You know, that's a makeup story. Oh, the house of Israel, the, the identity of Israel. It's, oh, no, that's a racist story and all of that rubbish. What is it like, that like, brethren? Some of us know what that is like. Some of us are right now uh, with, uh, you know, with all of the various splits and schisms that have occurred and we are right now uh, there, or we just uh, are enduring all of that as well. And the question is also, how do you keep going when your world falls apart? Well, you know, when most, if not all, of your friends are gone, what do you do? Now, that makes enduring exponentially more difficult. It may even cause you to doubt the reason for enduring. Now, this is real life in the 21st century of God's church. And I hope that we can see out of God's word some words more clearly from this distance. 
and I hope that uh, what we are reading in the Bible today will strengthen our resolve to endure to the end. You know, brethren, in the past church eras, there have been God-fearing men and women from every indication members of God's true church who have actually laid down their lives for God's truth. Please go to Psalm 34. Let's pick it up in verse 15. We can take comfort in these scriptures here, you know. Psalm 34, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, so he is watching us in a very positive way because he wants us to make it. He wants good things to happen to us. Verse uh, 15, these are the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. Now, why would the righteous brethren be crying out? Is it because they're going through some trials and some difficulties? Yes, indeed. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. You see, it doesn't say, and when we choose to go God's way, everything will be wonderful, and God will arrange our lives such that nothing bad ever happens. No trials. No, it doesn't say that. That's not what the Bible says. The message is, Troubles will come, and God will deliver us out of these troubles. Verse 18, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. So here is the key in discussing the entire subject now of enduring, of persevering. Here is one of the keys, at least. God will deliver us out of the trial if we are of a broken heart. And then it says, and save such as have a contrite spirit. Now, if you have a repentant attitude, and what does it mean? Well, in its most simple terms, it means that we recognize that God's way is right. We also recognize that we haven't always been going God's way and that we have done some things that are wrong and we repent of that. We ask God, God for help, to help us to repent. We ask God to help us see what we should be doing and to get back on the right path a broken heart a contrite spirit brethren we have to have that or we can't have god's help in an enduring and a continuous way because if we are not going god's way we put ourselves in a different category the righteous those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit will be helped in this way now we realize that god will eventually bring everyone or give everyone the chance to come into his family that is indeed his plan but right now he's working with uh, with us and he expects certain things from us so in verse 19 it says many of the uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivers him out of them all so once again you know we will have afflictions trials difficulties verse 20 he guards all his bones none of them is broken Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Now, that is a very encouraging message for us, isn't it? You know, God's eyes are upon us. He wants us to make it, and he will help us. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. Here is one fact of life, in God's church at least, if we are walking in God's way. Second Timothy 3, verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Now, it's not one of our happiest thoughts. And I know it's not one of those happiest, you know, scriptures we would choose to quote. But we have to be realistic, brethren. We have to realize what this scripture brings and every other that we may consider not to be so uplifting in any case. We have to realize what is going on through those big trials you know we have to realize how important it is that we endure through the trial that we cry out to god and that's exactly what we do we cry out to god we say help us please and he intervenes he helps that strengthens our faith and we go forward we endure we're through that trial bring on the next one you know well we don't of course always think of it in that way but the next one will come eventually, and when it does, we cry out to God once again. We ask for his help. We ask for his intervention, and he will help. We should be very, very thankful for that. So let's go now a couple of verses previous to that. Verse 10. Verse 10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, 
purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch. Well, who is this he saying? It's the Apostle Paul, brethren. What, is he lifting himself up here? Oh, no, not at all. He is lifting up God's way of life. Is it wrong to look at a person, to look at a positive example, for example, that somebody gives us and say, that is encouraging to me? Well, no, it's not wrong, of course. The Apostle Paul says, some of, you know, says, you have done it, and that's good. Do that. As long as I'm following God, as long as I'm going God's way, and you see what I go through, the persecutions and the afflictions, you see what happens to me, what persecutions I endured, and out of them the Lord delivered me. And indeed, there is the emphasis. You see, it is on the fact that God delivered him, not that he did anything, he didn't. It was God that did it, brethren. But we can look to the example of a human being. There is nothing wrong with that. Paul sets the stage for us to do that. But we look at the example of someone who is following God, who is doing God's will, and we can be encouraged by that. And Paul said that we should be. Verse 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So once again, we will be delivered out of it all. That is the important rem uh, reminder. It's important to remember all the time. Did the Apostle Paul give up? No, he certainly didn't. The Apostle Paul endured, and he endured a lot. Persecutions, afflictions, stonings, what happened to him at Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. He endured a lot. He was persecuted a lot indeed. Now, do you know what a stoning is, for example? You know, stoning. He was stoned to death. And uh, the Apostle Paul more than once was left for dead after being stoned. Paul was persecuted in the worst kinds of ways, brethren. But he said the Lord will deliver us from it all if we endure. He endured and he went on to other things, other trials, other happy moments in life, other things that he learned, other things times when God's with God's people but he endured nevertheless he kept it at it he did not give up we need to take the example of the Apostle Paul brethren and not give up never give up now there are important trials that come from without sometimes trials come upon us from within sometimes we cause our own trials we set ourselves up for a difficult situation in life Part of what we need to be learning is not to do that. As we follow God's way, we will do less and less of that. And now let's look at the Galatians chapter 6 and verse 5. Galatians 6 verse 5. Sorry, it will be verse 9 rather than 5. So Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So we have all been through a lot, and when we were younger, those trials were to us, you know, horrible things. We have been betrayed, brethren, we have been disillusioned and dis discouraged. In many cases, we have had the foundations ripped right out from under us. Now, we've been through some pretty nasty things, and we were just trying to do good. So do we give up? Because, well, those people did this and said that and changed this and changed that. Well, do we give up because of that, brethren? No, 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 we do not. We go back to the foundation and we say, I'm going to do what God says to do. And I'm, I will not become weary. And it's easy, very, very easy to become weary. Now, I know that and you know that. I began reading my quite avidly the literature from the Worldwide Church of God when I was about 20. My English was not sufficient, so I kept using a dictionary in order to understand what was written. Uh, much of my interest in the truth was the example of my aunt in England. I'm now 52, and I've been so I've been around for a while, you know. Now, some of you 
also have been around for a while and you know what has happened in your life you know how discouraging that that can be you know how we can be tempted to quit we can be tempted to give up this is a critical time for all of us but in a critical time indeed for all of us because we cannot give up we cannot become weary in well-doing we cannot say well after all i've done and look where I am, and look what is happening to the church. Well, look what's going on. After all, I've been through. But, you know, we'll be going through some more, I'm afraid. So we'll be going through some more, and we just need to realize that God will deliver us from all of the afflictions, afflictions and we need to hang in there not become weary in well-doing not 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 by any chance becoming weary in well-doing can also have the connotation of becoming weak or even going the wrong way mark chapter 4 beginning verse 14 here we are talking about the parable of the sower sower that is mark 4 14 the sower sows the word and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is shown sown when they heard here satan comes immediately and takes away the word and that was sown in their hearts now have you ever seen that happen that dear friends <laughs> verse 16 these likewise are the ones are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness well, that is great, you know. Uh, this article is fascinating and, you know, oh, I love it. And then uh, there are people who don't make the next step. Verse 17, and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Now, having roots is extremely important indeed, as you can well imagine. And we see that echoed biblically. Otherwise, you're just washed away. And here's verse 17. We're in Mark 4. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. That was 7, right? For a time afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now, are we of those who start the stumble, brethren? We can be, but we shouldn't be, of course. God doesn't want us to be, and we do not have to be. We don't have to be of those who stumble. We can be of those who hold fast. And can we can be of those who endure. And indeed we need to be of those who endure. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful so you know when your foundation is shaken you might look around for something else to hold on to you might go into a hobby you might start building your house you might isolate yourself somewhere in the countryside uh, you might do all kinds of things now of course having a hobby is nothing wrong in itself or you build your house However, if we allow those things to take over our lives, if we divert all of our energy that was going into becoming spiritually minded, if we divert that to some somewhere else because, oh, what happened has shaken me, I just need something to take up my time in the rest of my life. If we, go like, if we do that, brethren, we will not endure. And this world is very attractive. There are all kinds of glamorous things out there that attract our attention and draw us away from God's word, away from the realization that we need to stick with it, away from the realization that we have to endure. Now, sometimes when life is hard, we want it to be easy, don't we? We want it to be happy and fun. There will be certain amounts of that too indeed, and we can be thankful for that. Some of us have had a lot of less of, you know, less of than others. Some of us have more. Now, we need to 
allow ourselves to be taken away and distracted by the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things, because that will choke the word. And when the f word is choked, we are not thinking about the word. We are con concentrating and now studying and simply will lose desire to endure. And in that case, people who lose that concentration and focus, they simply fall by the side. Well, brethren, God doesn't want us to have that experience. He doesn't want us to uh, happen to. He doesn't want that that to happen to us. All of this can happen if we neglect the study of God's word. First Timothy chapter four: If we neglect the study of God's word, if we neglect making God's word a part of us, if we neglect concentra concentrating on what God wants us to be, if we neglect that, we will be neglecting our spiritual lives and we will not want to endure. Please go to First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14. First Timothy 4, 14. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. So Paul says don't neglect that. Now it's easy to neglect as we write as we read actually Mark in Mark chapter four. You know it's easy to neglect as we read in Mark four. It's easy to get caught up in the world. We have to be very careful that we don't allow that to happen, but we do not neglect the gift. What God has given us is an absolute gift. The world doesn't have that gift, of course. God has given us knowledge and understanding and wisdom concerning his word and his way of life that will eventually save the world. Now, that is not what we are all doing today or what we will be doing today. Jesus Christ will do that. And uh, nevertheless, we're still learning to help him do that. Well, no wonder. <laughs> Let's go now to verse verse 16, I think. Yes, verse 16. And it says, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Now, we need to be reading the Bible, obviously. We need to be learning spiritual principles. We need, we can listen to Bible studies and messages that learn more about God's way. It's extremely important that it's extremely important that we do that. Indeed, brethren, you see, this is one of the ways. What, that uh, one of the ways that we will endure, but with you know, by heeding the doctrine, we will endure condemnation and other difficult things. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Now, it is also important to note that the inverse is true, brethren. If we do not pay attention, do not pay heed to ourselves, if we do not pay heed to doctrine, if we are not immersing ourselves in an effort with God's help to, God go, to go God's way, then we will not make it. We will fail indeed. Now, we have to be very careful that we don't neglect, uh, you know, with, with, with intentions and so on. We cannot, we can become weary while we're trying to do good. We have to be very careful that we're trying to do good, certainly, but that we don't neglect, that we don't forget about some of the basic points of doctrine, that we don't forget that all of God's, what all of God's holidays mean. You know, brethren, God of the Father, through Mr. Armstrong, has shown us this meaning. Now, he has laid out his holiday plan for us, indeed. We read it right out of God's word. We understand it. We can be very, very thankful for that. And uh, God has given us that knowledge, very precious knowledge, indeed. He has given us that gift that we read about. And nevertheless, we can, we can still neglect it. With all of the best intentions, we can neglect that, indeed. 
now we stick to God's word we read God's word and we meditate on it indeed that's another requirement that we have that's one way to do that type of that uh, to do that we, we, that will help us indeed immeasurably now we in God's church brethren have goals God has given us the goals he has set us he has set the goals before us and we know what is coming in the future and we know what that God is preparing you know we know that what God is preparing people now uh he's preparing a people and he's preparing us to help in the future do we think about that you know how often do we think about that every day maybe not all of us do and maybe we should be thinking about it every single day now what is god doing with us we are part of a people who is being prepared and we have to have a goal we have to set that goal ahead of us now uh, I said that we have to have a goal and it's very important to have it and one of the goals is about the kingdom of God in the millennium all the suffering of this world oh well that, that will be finally a thing of the past because that's a goal God wants us to be there that is something really to really strive for do we ever think brethren well do we think single day I doubt it but do we think every you know do we think of the day about why God has called us you know how much time do we spend per day per week or per month meditating on the kingdom of God and what that means for us now I know what it's like to forget <laughs> I know what it is like to be consumed with everyday life to the point that we are not thinking about some of the most important things in our lives well it was a very often case that uh, Mr. Armstrong, you know, often on all the holidays and other and on other occasions, he would ask that question, "Why are we here? Are we here because God Almighty has given us His truth, has given us a part in what He is doing? Are we here to learn more about God the Father, about Jesus Christ, His Son, and our elder brother? Are we? Are we?" Are we here to learn more about how we can be more like them are we here to learn to help and to teach now whenever that is possible and certainly in the world tomorrow yes indeed is that part of what we are about indeed it, 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 it is or do we forget that now the other question for you brethren have we become Sabbath Christians now you mean Sabbath Christians you know we show up on the Sabbath I'm a Sabbath Christian and then the rest of the week I'm somebody else I do something else I don't think about these things if we don't know why we are here if we don't see the reason that God has called us and what he is doing with us we will not endure to the end brethren we simply will not James chapter 2 verse 21 James has something to do about the wars. So James verse 2 verse sorry chapter 2 James verse 21. The question is what not, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The use, of course, Abraham was called, as we know, the friend of God. 
then it's very important, is it not, that we show God that we mean what we say. Now that, when we say we want to go to his library, we want to go to his way, that is, we mean that. There is a, that culture also in James that says, be a doer of the word, word not a hearer only. Now, are we doers? Are we cons consciously uh, 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 thinking? Do, do we set aside time for that? We need to also make some time probably um, from time to time, usually in the morning, to see what's going on in the world and uh, what might we expect to be going on there. Now, how do you endure? We read earlier in Mark chapter 4, verse 16, that there were some who endured for but a while. They had no root. They did not endure. So you do not, so you do not endure, you do not make it well, you stop, you quit, you fail, if you do not have the roots, brethren. And the inverse for that is true. If we are firmly rooted, then we can make it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Ephesians 3.16, He would grant you, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, and so on. So how do you, you know, how do you endure? What, what do we do, or what do we need, to, pay, uh, to do if we want to be people that keep on going, people that do not quit, people that will not fail. Well, we ask for God's help, certainly, and uh, we seek, we stick actually to the basics, and then we ask to be rooted and grounded in God's Word, and we, we, we just work at it, you know, we just don't work with it. We work at it. We study God's word, we think about important, rooted, and grounded in love. We need to keep the kingdom alive in our minds. The goal has to be there. And if we are rooted and grounded in love, that will be help to help us to do exactly exactly that. Now, in a sense, brethren, we have to exclude the world. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean that we become hermits and we live and live on a mountain top by ourselves or anything like that. No, but we have to have some time where we, where the world stays out and we concentrate on other worldly things, other worldly things, godly things. So there is a proper way to exclude the world and there is a need for doing that on a pretty regular basis and thinking about and meditating on the things of God indeed are we wasting time with frivolous things that really don't matter brethren and are we not concentrating on some of the things that do matter do we? Uh, patience gives us the ability to wait and faith gives us the ability to wait for God to intervene in our lives. Now to wait for God to show us where we need to do, what we need to do, wait for God to direct us to you know, uh, wait for God to bring about the things that need to be brought about. And patience and faith are both fruits of the Holy Spirit. Patience does not, well, it does actually mean certain things, but uh, it does not.
patience, you know, and faith are both fruits of God's Holy Spirit. And patience does not mean simply standing quietly in line, doing nothing, waiting for something to happen. Patience is perseverance. The word long-suffering itself is a synonym of patience, indeed. The Greek word for long-suffering is makrothuma, and we find it in Galatians 5.22. The entire Greek-English lexicon is describing this, well, this animal. Or describing this 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 uh, uh, veggie. There are also several scriptures in which patience and faith are mentioned together. If you go and let's look at Hebrews 11 verse 36, talking about some of the things that people want that people want through. Uh, Now, patience and faith are mentioned together in several scriptures. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, verse, verse 36, talking about some of the things that people went through. Some of our forefathers, spiritually speaking, here is what we still have to learn in Hebrews 11. And verse 36, he says, let me just, still others had trial of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sewn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wondered Hebrews eleven verse thirty six. So some had others had trials of mockers and scourging, yes, and of chains and imprisonment, verse 37. They were stoned, they were sewn in two, were tempted, were slain with a sword. They want, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in the deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all of these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. Well, isn't that amazing? After all they went through, they didn't receive the promises because many of them were killed. And yet, they remained steadfast. They remained faithful. They endured through all of it. And these are written for our example. Verse 40, God having provided something for better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So God has a plan, but he, he is working. He, he worked with, with humans. He worked with us. You know, they obtained a good report through faith. They believed God. They thought about what God has said. They read what God said in his interview as they believed it. They had faith in what he said. They then they didn't even receive the promises. There were delays for a while. This they will receive, you know, the promises once again, faith and patience, a couple of the fruits that uh, we have asked for. Now, uh, They will receive those promises and once again faith and patience, a couple of the fruits of God's Holy Spirit, fruits that will enable us to endure to the end. But these are fruits that we have to ask for. God doesn't tend to give us things we don't ask for, brethren. But these are things we know and uh, we know that we need to be asking for and that we, sh we should be indeed asking for. So you see, we need what we need is to be asking we need to be asking for faith and patience but as i said before we all have been through a lot 
No doubts about that. We have all been through a lot indeed. But you know, according to God's word, none of us has been through too much. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Now, uh, this is something that is there. But with the temptation, we'll also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. But then over the years, many people have given up. Now, God didn't give up, certainly. Why should he? Because God doesn't give up. He never gives up on us. Have you realized that? Never. So as we have seen in several scriptures right out of God's word, we have to keep our eyes on the goal. We have to remember that we have been taught. We have, been, we have to hang out uh, onto the foundation. We have to be steadfast, standing firmly steadfast in God's word on the, that solid foundation that God has given us. Watch means that we need to be thinking about meditating and remembering what that foundation is on a, compro on a continual basis. Then we need to have faith that God will intervene and that he will keep us. Then we wait patiently for that. No matter how long it takes, we wait patiently because, brethren, we're standing at the threshold of a tremendous period of time. A time when tears will be dried and when suffering will cease. A time when God's supreme and holy law will be completely in force and will finally bring true and lasting peace to this earth. The exciting, exciting part is that God is offering us a part in that but that brethren only if we keep our eyes on the goal and uh, if we hang in there if we do there's indeed tremendous reward awaiting all of us so my dear brethren indeed having all those rewards and uh, 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 blessings waiting for us let us endure let us indeed endure unto the end